Patrick Murphy begins tonight with more of your stories of World War II. I had this obligation to tell my history. I owe it to my family. I survived and it is my responsibility to do that. I have to do that now. In 1932, Nathan and Helen Goldman and their children Henri, Adolphe, and Sabine fled from their home in Warsaw to Paris to escape anti-Semitism. A second daughter, Rachel, was born the following year. I remember one particular day, it was a Sunday, and that was the only day my father was not working. I was sitting on the buffet by the window, and he was cutting my hair, and he said to my mother, it's the beginning of doom. That was the day that Germany invaded Poland. Over the following months, Germany would invade Norway, Denmark, Belgium, Luxembourg, and the Netherlands. On June 14, 1940, Parisians watched as German troops marched down the Champs-Élysées, the beginning of more than four years of occupation. Persecution of Jews in France began immediately. We had to wear the star. What did that mean? It meant that when you wore the star, you were not allowed to, you had a curfew of 8 o'clock. You had to go grocery shopping between 3 and 4. Sometimes we were allowed to go to school, sometimes not. It also meant that sometimes my aunt could work and sometimes she couldn't. Uh, we, were, no, we were not allowed to, my aunt was rich, she had a radio. They took away her radio. My little cousin Arlette, who was three and a half, had a tricycle, and they took away her tricycle. She could not have, she could not have a tricycle. Um, they, uh, basically, we were subhuman. We were subhuman. In August of 1941, Rachel's father was taken away by the SS. That December, he died in a French hospital, the victim of German medical experiments. The following summer, Rachel's mother made plans to send her daughters to a children's camp. Rachel was instructed to tell everyone her name was Christine and tell no one that she was Jewish. Rachel went on ahead. Sabine would come in a few days after celebrating her birthday in Paris. On July the 16th, my mother, my brother Adolf, my brother Henri and my sister Sabine were taken away. Rachel would never see her family again. She spent the rest of the war in hiding with no idea of what had become of them. Liberation came. We went back to Paris, and that's when we started finding out about what really happened to our families. You know, I always never thought that my mother would make it because my mother was not well. But I always thought my brothers, they were very strong, and my sister. I always thought they would make it. Rachel emigrated to America, learning nothing more of her family's fate, until more than half a century later she discovered the Red Cross's International Services Program. One of the missions of International Services uh, for all of the Red Cross chapters all over the world is to try to reunite um, loved ones who've been separated by war or armed conflict. The case of uh, Holocaust and World War II victim tracing is really uh, very different from the rest of the tracing we do. It's different because it's their old record, 65 years old. The International uh, Tracing Center for the Red Cross is actually in Erlsen, Germany which is a small town north of Frankfurt. They employ about 300 people who do nothing but archive these records. The Red Cross was able to document that Rachel's two brothers had died at Auschwitz. But at least it was a closure. At least I know they died. I've always had a fantasy, though, about my sister Sabine. In my heart, my head, I don't want her to die because she was my idol. She was, um, I sort of imagined that she 
has amnesia and she's living in Israel. And I never wanted to go to Israel because I guess in the back of my mind I knew that she was not there. But for about 25 years I kept her alive in my heart. I mean she's still alive in my heart now but in my head I kept her alive. And uh, I remember our first trip to Israel. We were there for 11 days and I cried for 11 solid days because I grieved because I had to kill my fantasy. It's a tradition in the Jewish religion um, called the Yurtzeit. The day of that person's death is commemorated by family and loved ones on that same date each year. And as Rachel said earlier, uh, she took the dates of death of her brothers and had them converted or translated into the Hebrew uh, dates, since the Hebrew calendar is different. And that's what she observes as their yurtzeit. You light a candle and you say a special prayer. Survival is an ordeal in itself. For years, Rachel has shared it with a group of other childhood survivors. When we get together, and you hear us talking, telling our stories. We cry for many of other siblings because sometimes it's the first time they tell their stories. History, and that's, and we all cry together at the end, but comes the evening, we start singing and dancing because we're survivors. <laughs> 